types of tools and advanced technology, it became easy for scientists to perform experiments and make new discoveries in the late 18th century. Many elements as we know them today on the periodic table were discovered in this time, and it soon became a quest to discover them all. A man named Joseph Priestley was a Presbyterian minister, and although he never had a degree in chemistry, he discovered some of these elements. In 1774, Priestley performed an experiment by heating mercury oxide and collecting the air that came off it. He found that this air was very strange. It made things burn very quickly, but it didn't burn by itself. In 1770, Priestley lived near a brewery that was always producing bubbles in its vats. Priestley experimented with these bubbles and found that they were made of a different kind of air. His neighbor, Johann Jacob Schwepp, found that when this air was dissolved in water, it made a refreshing sparkling drink. So he opened the first sparkling mineral water factory in 1783. Priestley had discovered oxygen and carbon dioxide, and even though hydrogen was a type of air that had been discovered almost 100 years earlier, nobody had quite yet realized the fact that there were different kinds of air. Priestley was the first to scientifically document the fact that air is not an element itself, but it's made of many other elements and molecules. Even though the ancient Greek theory about air was wrong, we still used their words to name some of the elements that we found. Oxygen was named after the Greek words oxys, meaning acid, and genus, meaning generator. Oxygen was named an acid generator because most acids are made with oxygen. Nitrogen is an explosives generator, and hydrogen is a water generator. With the discovery of real elements, we could find ways to make those elements as pure as possible. This was thought to make the material stronger or better in some way. But this wasn't the case when Napoleon attacked Russia in 1812. The buttons on Napoleon and his soldiers were made from pure tin, and tin changes its atomic shape when its temperature drops below 13 degrees centigrade. At that temperature, its atoms go from an octahedral arrangement to a tetrahedral arrangement, causing it to expand, crack, and crumble. The octahedral state has a coordination number of six, meaning that there are six other atoms around every atom. The tetrahedral state has a coordination number of four, meaning that there are four other atoms around every atom. When tin changes from the octahedral state to the tetrahedral state, more space is left in between each atom, causing it to expand. My roommate, Cody Reader, has a bit of tin in the freezer, and he shows exactly how tin changes when it gets cold on his channel. In the frighteningly cold winter of Russia, the soldiers' tin buttons crumbled in their hands, leaving their coats open and exposed to the wind. That was one drop of rain in the ocean of reasons why Napoleon decided to abort his mission to Russia, but it was a drop of rain that changed history. Napoleon was a victim of the laws of chemistry and physics. There was no way he could have predicted all the trouble he would experience in Russia, but how different would history be if we had decided to use brass or maybe iron buttons? Maybe the soldiers' coats never would have been left open to the wind. Maybe Russia would have been claimed French territory. What would you do in a dangerous situation like Napoleon's? Joseph Priestley was just a minister, a backyard scientist who did chemistry as a hobby, but his ideas earned him wealth, fame, medals, and a prestigious job as science advisor to the Earl of Shelburne. How can your science experiments help revolutionize the world? Think about it.